Okay, right here is a 1985 Caterpillar D10. The story of the legendary D10 began in 1969 when Caterpillar engineers began to assess the possibility of developing a large mining class bulldozer featuring a high track drive that was to become known as the D10. What followed was an eight year project research and development phase in which 10 prototype D10s were built and tested. Then, in September 1977, Caterpillar officially announced and unveiled to the world the D-10. And the following year, in 1978, the D-10 went into full production. The D-10 was a big engineering step for Caterpillar. And one of the main reasons for this was because the D-10 was the first elevated sprocket and final drive tractor ever built by Caterpillar. And although the D-10 was Caterpillar's answer to the industry's need for a larger mining class tractor, many of Caterpillar's customers were skeptical of this new design at first. However, once customers got their hands on the D-10, their attitude quickly changed. Now, let's go and get a closer look at the 10. Three different blades were offered for the D10, depending on what the customer preferred. The big blade that you see on the front of this 10 is a Model 10U blade. It measures 19 feet 8 inches across, and it is rated at 38.2 cubic yards. And to help give you an idea of the size of a D10, this tractor measures 14 feet 10 inches tall from the ground to the top of the ropes over the operator's cab and 12 feet wide. Another feature that was unique to the D10 at this time was bogey mounted track rollers on the undercarriage. All bogies, four per side, oscillated on sealed and lubricated track pins to conform to rough terrain by putting more track on the ground for better traction. This new design also provided for a smoother ride for the operator. Prior to the introduction of the D-10, all of Caterpillar's tractors featured a conventional low sprocket and final drive design. The D-10 would forever change the look of a large Caterpillar tractor with its new elevated sprocket and final drive, a design concept first developed back in 1965 by Caterpillar engineer Bob Purcell. This new design helped remove shock that caused gear and bearing wear, which thus reduced abrasive wear on the seals. It also kept the final drives out of the water and mud, and minimized contact from big rocks. Another benefit to this design was that the entire final drive module could be removed as a single unit. Now, let's go up on the D-10. The D-10 is powered by a Caterpillar D-348 four-stroke twin turbocharged V-12 diesel engine that produces 700 horsepower for this beast. This is the exact same diesel engine that was also used in the Caterpillar 992B wheel loader and the Caterpillar 777A off-road mining truck. As you can see, this particular D10 has twin exhaust stacks. However, not all D10s were built like this. Early model D10s were built with a single large exhaust stack giving them a very distinct appearance. 
This changed starting in 1980 as D10s were built with twin exhaust stacks, which was to accommodate for the redesigned exhaust system. In addition to this change, the twin turbos were moved further away from the firewall and the air cleaners were repositioned behind the exhaust stacks. Here you can see one of the air cleaners and the other is on the opposite side. Now let's go inside and check out the operator's cab. From here you can get a good overview inside the operator's cab of the D10. Okay, out in front here you can see all the warning lights and gauges to monitor this entire tractor when it's in operation. And here you can see the switches to control the headlights. This is the ignition switch. And this big hand lever that you see out here on the right side controls the engine throttle. You pull back to increase the throttle and push forward to decrease the throttle. On the floor you can see two foot pedals. This is the brake pedal on the left side. And this pedal you see over here off to the right side controls the decelerator. On the left side are the two steering clutch and brake hand levers, which you can see right here. This is how you steer the D10. Each hand lever controls each individual track. And how they work is very simple. Pull back halfway to apply the steering clutch and pull back all the way to apply the track brake. The D10 has a planetary type full power shift transmission installed in it. And this hand lever that you see right here is the gear shift for the transmission. This is in the neutral position right here. There are three forward speeds and three reverse speeds on the D10. On my right side, this hand lever you see controls all the functions of the blade out in front. And this hand lever you see right here controls all the functions of the shank ripper, which is located on the back of the tractor, which you can see looking out the rear window. This other hand lever you see back here in the corner on the right side controls the ripper shank position. Another improvement that was made to the D10 was that the operator's seat was angled 15 degrees to the right to provide for better operator visibility. And from here you can get a crystal clear view of what the operator would see if he were running a D10. Mounted on the back of the tractor, directly behind the operator's cab, sits a 382 gallon diesel fuel tank, which you can see right back there. The cap to fill this tank with fuel is located on the right hand side of the tractor. On the side of the machine, you can see the classic Caterpillar decal and where it says D10. As you can see, this particular D10 is equipped with a single shank ripper. However, Caterpillar also offered a multi-shank ripper depending on what the customer preferred. And if the customer chose not to have a ripper installed on the D10, Caterpillar would install a three ton counterweight on the back to counterbalance the tractor. Up top, 
You can see the two cylinders to tilt the ripper forward and back. And down bottom, you can see the two hoist cylinders, which will raise and lower the ripper. The D-10 was also Caterpillar's first large tractor to feature a modular design, which not only allowed for quick breakdown and reassembly of the machine, but also helped to reduce repair time. And the overall operating weight of a D-10 equipped with a Model 11U blade and a single shank ripper, as you see right here, is 95 tons. With the multi-shank ripper installed, this tractor would weigh in at 96 tons. Caterpillar's customers had asked for a larger mining class tractor, and Caterpillar had delivered a monster that proved to be more than 50% more productive than Caterpillar's previous flagship tractor, the D9H. The last D10 was built in early 1986 and only one month later following the shipment of the last D-10, Caterpillar engineers began working on the successor to the D-10, which would become known as the D-11N, which the D-10 had evolved into. But there she is, Caterpillar's first elevated sprocket and final drive tractor that would set new standards for the company in the future, the legendary D-10.